Okay, so uh, I am Rob Sanderson, uh, also one of the editors of the specifications for AAAF uh, from Stanford University. So I wanted to talk a little bit um, about the presentation API, um, why we uh, came to build this alongside the image API, uh, and what it's useful for, and uh, given the interest in the room, um, how it plays in with annotation. So as we, uh, we heard already from um, Tom's presentation this morning, um, images really are a fundamental disseminator of cultural heritage um, around the world and uh, across institutions. So you know, we can see here um, some of the Lewis Chessmen um, in the British Museum um, and a, a manuscript from Harvard. But here is our apostle example. We need more than one image to really interact with any of these objects. Just a single image of a painting um, isn't enough to investigate and research and explore that particular object um, in any great detail. So previously, you know, some of the, um, the gold standard for a number of images I'd heard was about 30 of any single page, but we heard this morning um, from Yale that they take a hundred images of a single object. So um, clearly in that case we need to be able to work um, with more than one image, more than one view um, of that same thing in the same environment. That then raises a whole raft of questions. So how do I know which images that I should use? You know, I don't want to include a page from one manuscript in a view of a different manuscript. That would be very strange. Um, in which order should I be viewing them? I want to be you know, leafing through the pages in order um, as they are, they're present, uh, rather than randomly jumping around. Uh, what do they depict? How can I reuse them? Who should be attributed for um, producing the images or um, looking after the object? What other resources are there that I can display to the user so that they can understand what they're looking at? What are some related objects that they might also be interested in? And so on and so on and so on. So it raises many, many questions, um, which we sort of tried to boil down to just one question. Actually, what we care about is not the answers to any of those individual questions. It's how do we provide a dynamic, rich, rewarding user experience to the people who want to interact with our objects, with our content. So the presentation API then is not a traditional metadata standard of which uh, the cultural heritage community has many hundreds. Um, instead, our scope is to provide only the information necessary for an application such as Mirador or the Universal Viewer or anything else that will come along in the future to present a particular object to a user so that they can see and understand that object. So uh, like John, um, we don't, and we're not going to walk through uh, all of the specification, um, but if you are interested, if you're of the technical um, mindset, um, the URI there is the, the full spec that you could look at later. So before I move on, um, one thing um, which has in the past caused some confusion um, in, in the transition um, between AAAF and Shared Canvas, uh, the AAAF presentation API uses a particular model that's been around for a little bit longer and um, was developed by many of the same people called the Shared Canvas model. Um, so first I want to explain how that Shared Canvas model works and what its advantages are, and then we'll look um, in no great detail at exactly how that's um, implemented using the AAAF presentation API. So what is Shared Canvas? So a Shared Canvas, a canvas as you all know, uh, is a space, and <coughs> painters will paint stuff on it. Um, and that's practically what we mean uh, also in the technological space uh, for a canvas. So for us, a shared canvas is an abstract space which is used for building up piece by piece a view of an object. So think a PowerPoint slide. 
here we have a slide, which starts off empty, and we want to, say, drag an image onto it, and then we're going to add some text, and we might add uh, a click-through link so that you can go, and, um, go out, as John did, to an external source, uh, and so on. So for the shared canvas model, uh, we can add an image onto that canvas, um, which will then be displayed uh, as you've seen already in Mirador and as you will see in the uh, um, Digerati's pre uh, presentation that follows mine about the uh, Universal Viewer. But beyond that, you can also then add other content, such as the transcription of those columns of text, um, and aligned in the canvas with the areas uh, of the text in the image or really aligned with the areas of where the text is in the real world object. And you've seen this slide before in Anna's presentation this morning. You can then, on top of that, layer additional information such as commentary about the regions. Uh, you can add links to other resources. You could add audio if there was a, um, a recording or presentation uh, of, uh, say, a, a musical score, uh, and so on and so forth. So that's the model that the presentation API uses. Why? Why do we want to go to <laughs> that extreme when really shouldn't we, couldn't we just add those uh, annotations and transcriptions onto the image itself? So here's one example of why it's important. You can have one canvas uh, with many, many images, uh, 100 in, in Yale's case or YCBA's case. Uh, so this is the Archimedes palimpsest. Uh, the top one is a natural light. Uh, this middle image is a, an artificially computer-generated image where you can read uh, the undertext as well as the overtext. Um, and there's the um, uh, raking light uh, with the uh, much clearer undertext visible. So that's all exactly the same bits of parchment, just photographed in different ways using multispectral analysis and some um, computer vision techniques. So if we had to transcribe all of those lines of text and associate with them with all 100 images of that particular piece of paper, or parchment in this case, uh, that would be a mammoth task, much more mammoth than simply transcribing it in the first place. Uh, and hence, uh, having the canvas as the central point that we can focus on and align all of our annotations with, um, we avoid that problem. The converse is also true. Uh, so you might have one image, but it refers uh, or has depictions of multiple physical objects. Um, so as uh, time wears away at us all, um, it wears away at uh, pages of uh, parchment and, and paper uh, m much more heavily. Um, and hence you end up with these collections of fragments uh, of pages where they're stuck down, sometimes uh, lamentably with sticky tape, uh, others with more <laughs> conservation-friendly methods, um, onto other pieces of paper. But originally, they would come from multiple pages um, from different objects. And as uh, Stu mentioned, we can then reunify those objects um, and represent them by uh, aligning the parts of those images with the part of the canvas that it originally comes from, even if parts of the same page are held by multiple institutions. Uh, and finally, as I hinted at earlier, it's not just images. Um, there's also other content that we would want to uh, associate with the canvas, such as uh, the MP3 file or audio file uh, of a performance of a musical manuscript like this. So this is um, World's Bliss. Uh, it's the last remaining uh, folio of a 15th century English text, uh, which had, uh, the codex was about 350 folios long. This is the last one that survives. It only survives because it was used as the flyleaf for another work. Um, so yeah, the only way that we know about this particular piece is this particular, um, this particular leaf. Uh, and of course, it has been performed many times by many groups, and we can associate the performances of the music uh, with the canvas so that you can experience the music as well as see the object. 
Uh, you've also seen that particular image. So on to how we do it uh, in the Presentation API. So one of the, the key things that Presentation API provides is a model for the structure of an object uh, and collections of objects. So to start at the bottom, we've already seen how you can uh, get rich and interactive uh, views of images. And those are aligned with canvases so that we can associate other uh, information such as annotations or, or further content. We can order those canvases in a sequence so that you can page from page one through page 10 rather than jumping around. And we collect those, uh, that sequence uh, into a manifest that represents the, the codex in this case or the polyptych or the statue or the uh, object of, of whatever sort you have. There can then be collections of multiple objects uh, and to allow um, hierarchy, you can have collections of collections implied by that circular arrow at the top there. So that's the structural um, possibilities with the, the presentation API. We then have uh, descriptive content. And again, this is the information that a client should present to the user so that the user can understand what they're looking at. It's not there to drive uh, inferencing or rich machine-to-machine -machine interoperability. Uh, it's there simply to provide that context to the user so that they say, okay, I see what the name of this thing is. Uh, I can read a little description of it. I can see pairs of labels and values, such as it was created approximately in the um, 1300s. Of course, rights information is critically important. We need to know what license the information is used, usable under. Is it uh, public domain? Is it Creative Commons? Uh, or are there more restrictive uh, reuse rights associated with it? Attribution uh, is important. So the um, attribution field says, here is a piece of a little snippet of text, which can be rich text, um, that is required by conforming clients to be displayed to the user. So this is not the case where you know, we're pulling these uh, lovely images from around the world and the host institution gets no recognition. Uh, if there's an attribution, the clients must display that attribution statement. Uh, and the same with the logo, but it's essentially an image that's required to be displayed in the same way that the text and the attribution is required to be displayed. There's also, uh, in true uh, linked data uh, style, uh, links to additional services, such as potentially searching within the object, um, autocomplete on that text, uh, and so on and so forth, and links to related uh, semantic resources uh, or um, further resources to display to the user. How do we do this? Um, we use a JSON-LD, uh, which is a new format from the W3C, um, which uh, is uh, JSON, you may have heard of if you have a technical side, uh, which is very easy to develop um, for uh, web developers, but it's also linked data, um, so it plays nice with others. Um, you can contribute to the global knowledge graph um, at the same time as having something that's easy to, to work with. Uh, curly brackets being the new XML angle brackets. I can't have a, you know, a presentation without any of them. Uh, so this is what the, that looks like. It's relatively easy to understand. You have a, a resource, which is a canvas. It's got a height and width and a label. It has some annotations um, and some other content that can be linked to it. So in summary, um, we pr have presentation data, not metadata, um, using the shared canvas model and implemented using uh, JSON-based linked data. Uh, again, if you'd like to see the full specification, which is replete with examples and uh, use cases, um, you can see it at that URI. <laughs> the way that resources are linked to canvases in the presentation API uh, is via annotations um, rather than just uh, simple JSON. So to explain why we came to that model, um, we initially had uh, the use case in mind of annotation in general, where we would have an image up and you could write a comment about it, as we've seen um, already today, uh, or tagging it or um, similar things. So we then thought, well, it would be also great to have people be able to transcribe 
the, the text within the image. But from a computer's point of view, both of those things look pretty similar. Here is a little bit of text about an area of an image, and that's a comment. And here is a little bit of text about an area of an image, but in this use, it's a, the transcription of what's in the image. So all we do is we use exactly the same model, and with the flag to say this is a transcription, or this paints the canvas, uh, and this guy over here is a comment about the canvas. Then we ran into the use case with the multiple images, um, where we had, um, instead of a comment about an image, we wanted to be able to comment about, uh, I think initially it was three images, and then it became 30, and now it's become 100, and we didn't want to have to have very complex annotations that talked about 100 different regions, so in true computer science style, uh, we introduced a layer of indirection between uh, the resources, which is the canvas, so you then talk about the canvas, and the image talks about the canvas, uh, and ta-da, uh, hence. Now, uh, I am famous for saying that everything is an annotation. The, um, <laughs> well known. <laughs> uh, then to change hats from my AAAF work to my W3C work, uh, I um, was responsible for the web standards bullet at the bottom of uh, that initial slide um, because I am one of the two co-chairs for the W3C working group on web annotation, um, which has come out of a community group over the last three years, um, which through the, before that came out of a um, project funded by the Mellon Foundation called the Open Annotation Collaboration. Uh, so while I was at Los Alamos National Labs, um, I became, I heard about um, what Tom and co were doing as part of the digital manuscript work, and in fact we'd uh, talked about it for several years before that, um, in planning stages. My PhD actually is in medieval manuscripts, so uh, the perfect storm arose, and here we had a whole bunch of medieval manuscripts, which were images that had some transcription and wanted to have comments, and we had annotations, and we had linked data, and we sort of mushed it all together and made a nice little sculpture, and that's what AAAF is. So just to put up in front of you, I would not be doing my... Um, W3C job if I did not do this. Uh, there is a working group in the W3C, so this will, at the end of 2016, become a full standard along li the lines of HTML, CSS, SVG, all of those um, web interoperability standards, the things that make the web work. So annotation will be one of those things um, with exactly the same status. Um, AAAF uses this already. We will have a very small uh, amount of alignment to do at the end of 2016. Um, and as co-chair, I can ensure that this is the case, of course. Um, we have, as part of the working group, already published <coughs> a first working draft of the uh, web annotation data model. Um, you can see myself and my co-chair there. And this, uh, people will not be surprised to see, will look very, very similar to the open annotation collaboration work and the web annotation community group work because it simply imports it and updates it. So, um, there is one more uh, part of the work going on in the W3C, which is to standardize the interactions between clients and servers. So, not just the model and what the data looks like, but how do you ship it from Mirador to some system at the back end that looks after the annotations. Um, so at the moment we have uh, a few of those things with varying levels of interoperability. Um, Harvard has a service called Catch. At Stanford we're working on a service called Trianon. Um, Mike at Yale has a service and so forth. So we need to um, also have that same level of interoperability so that clients can talk to arbitrary annotation servers and um, to manage the annotations, not just read them. 